In today's program, unmanned technology in the modern Ukrainian army. In what way does Ukrainian technology surprise world experts in armaments today? How can a small unmanned armored car change the course of a war? The war of the future is the war of robots. What used to be science fiction is almost reality today. For example, aircraft designers face a lot of problems in the design of new generation combat aircraft. Keeping the pilot alive during strong overloads and the slightest damage is becoming increasingly difficult and complicated. Losing a specialist pilot of an ultra-modern combat vehicle is easy, but training a new one takes months and even years. Therefore, the leading countries of the world are investing more and more money and efforts in the robotization of military equipment. Every year, unmanned air and ground vehicles are becoming closer to perfect, more inconspicuous, and less vulnerable with their operators being hundreds of kilometers away from the battlefield in complete safety. In the beginning of 2014, Ukraine was a country with a practically non-existent armed forces. Most of the vehicles were obsolete from the Soviet era, and only a handful of peacekeepers who were in Iraq or the Congo at the beginning of the 2000s had real combat experience. But Russian aggression in Crimea and east of Ukraine forced our army to do the impossible, rebuild in a matter of several months. Today, three years later, Western specialists come to Ukraine not only to teach Ukrainian fighters military affairs, but also to learn from them and their experiences in modern land warfare. Meanwhile, the military industrial complex of Ukraine began both modernizing obsolete military equipment and creating new vehicles based on the latest high-tech developments. One of the fruits of the technological breakthrough is the unmanned tactical multi-purpose vehicle called Phantom. The design of this amazing combat vehicle is the brainchild of a man who had never in his lifetime served in the army. Next, how a civilian specialist became the head of one of the key defense enterprises of the country, and why does Ukraine need a land drone? A lawyer who is not yet 30, at best a junior partner in a law firm, but Pavel Burbel in his 29 years is an important person in the defense sector of Ukraine. How could such a young lawyer manage to become the head of a major state enterprise in the defense sector? I believe this is the best job associated with technology, weapons, and innovation there could be for a man. It was very interesting for me. In 2014, I got a call. I was invited for an interview. It was an offer with legal work at Oberonprom, a large enterprise operating in the Ukrainian defense industry. Since Pavel already had experience in international relations, he was soon offered to become director of the state foreign trade enterprise. It exists since 1998 and deals with purchasing of military equipment for the Ukrainian army, as well as the sale of Ukrainian arms on the world market. Just the place for a talented manager. Pavlo in turn to where he immediately determined that the main asset of the national defense sector's people. We help our institutes to capitalize on their academic knowledge in both eastern and western countries of the world. At the expense of foreign investors, they have developed and continue to develop department science and technologies, which remain in Ukraine. That helped to attract money to the economy. But by the time the country had already began fighting in the war in the east, and the national army was in desperate need of state-of-the-art military equipment like never before, and preferably at affordable prices. Having been to many armaments exhibitions around the world, Barbul determined the main trend of recent years, namely the robotization of military vehicles. Spectex Dono Export was the first among Ukrainian state-owned enterprises to establish production of UAVs for aerial reconnaissance, which the military needed here and now. There was also one idea for the future, to create an unmanned robotic armored vehicle. We conducted a small survey asking soldiers from various units if they thought it would be cool if they would not have to send soldiers to the front line on reconnaissance missions in zones that were not under enemy fire. Unmanned land vehicles are being used today by the leading armies of the world, specifically those of the U.S., Israel, and some NATO countries. In the news and feature films, robot sappers are usually shown neutralizing dangerous objects. 
but the application range of unmanned ground vehicles is much wider. Right after the First World War, developers and designers dreamed of creating a radio-controlled tank. Similar machines, teletanks, were first used by the Soviet Union during the attack on Finland in 1940. But the technology did not help the aggressor win the war. A few years later, German designers came up with a mobile mine on trucks to arrange unexpected explosions on the front lines or destroy strategically important objects. Several such devices were noticed during the landing of the Allies in Normandy in 1944 but they were not widely used. The Cold War gave unmanned technology a new impetus. In the 1960s in the United States, there were attempts to create not just radio-controlled, but autonomous vehicles that would be able to act independently. As a result, 30 years later, special units of the American Army were armed with robots for a variety of tasks, from mine clearance to laser guidance for ultra-precision missile strikes. The civil sphere also had a use for robots. Rescuers were looking for the victims of the terrorist attacks of the September 11, 2001, with the help of robots. Initially, Pablo did not want to create a purely combat vehicle. We realized that we needed a complex that would effectively evacuate the wounded, would be able to deliver ammunition, and would be able to provide quick fire support for ambushed units. And all of that had to be integrated into one unit. How long did it take Ukrainian developers to create the Phantom? And what characteristics make it truly unique among other armored combat vehicles? In the first half of 2017, the Phantom only had one prototype. It can be seen from history that defense companies can spend years trying to create a new model from scratch and bring it to the stage of an active prototype. UATV inquired about the time frame for the Phantom, and it was not immediately possible to believe the answer. It exists since the fall of 2016. We first showed the layout on weapons and safety in October 2016. It was quite raw and we have been constantly refining it, adding new systems, new weapons, new sighting systems and constantly improving its software. It only took six months for the idea to be turned into a prototype. Although it is difficult to call the Phantom a prototype, as of spring 2017, a plethora of functions was added to the vehicle in record time. The prototype of the Phantom was assembled by a private company commissioned by Spetsdekono Export in an atmosphere of secrecy, so nobody saw the production. The process except Pablo and the specialists to launch this project. The lawyer had to become somewhat of a designer. I do not have any special military technical education, so I had to familiarize myself with everything here at the production facility and stage and visit various factories and workshops specializing in this field. It seems that Barboul can list the characteristics of his creation even in his sleep. The vehicle is three meters long, one and a half meters wide, and almost a meter high. It weighs a ton, of which 350 kilograms is the payload. It is powered by a hybrid diesel electric engine with a capacity of 30 kilowatts. The Phantom is a six-wheel drive, has a hydraulic suspension, power reserve of up to 20 kilometers, and its maximum speed is 38 kilometers per hour. Crossing half meter deep ponds is not a problem for it. The vehicle is controlled by an operator with a special console over over a secure encrypted radio channel. The communication range is up to two and a half kilometers, depending on the terrain. But what do you do if the enemy tries to jam or intercept the signal? A fiber optic cable for communication and control can be the only solution against communication jamming in some situations. We have reels that unwind the cable up to five kilometers. The Phantom literally has a five kilometer long leash of strong optical fiber. This technology does not allow for radio detection and interception at all. Without this important function, many high-tech unmanned vehicles on the world market, including aerial ones, are simply not suitable for the Ukrainian army. Many Western companies with world names that conducted tests in Ukraine have failed. Their drones either fell out of the sky or got lost because of too much interference, as they could not counteract the means of electronic combat. They were not developed for that and were never tested in such conditions. So we took all these factors into account when developing the Phantom. 
The Ukrainian vehicle automatically drives around obstacles and helps the operator to find the desired route with the help of a 3D camera and can return to the base on its own. The prototype is already equipped with special compartments for ammunition. The machine can follow a unit with ammunition or deliver it to its soldiers. On the sides, there are special grills to which stretchers can be fastened to evacuate two wounded soldiers from the battlefield. All that does not prevent the Phantom from functioning as a lethal combat vehicle at the same time. We have already tested the arming complex. It can hit targets at a distance of up to two and a half kilometers with standard weapons. In addition, we have already integrated anti-tank missiles, which we showed at the exhibition in Abu Dhabi. Soon we are going to test the missile weapons. In addition, this vehicle allows for installation of an automatic grenade launcher. Equipment for laser guidance to hit targets with different weapons. According to the designers, in the end, the Phantom should act in conjunction with the drone and give the operator just a complete picture of the battlefield. But the ability to deliver unexpected high-precision hits. In a word, to play the role of a high-tech combat vehicle in the wars of the present and future, even before the start of mass production, the Ukrainian Phantom attracted the interest of foreign customers from all over the world. Есть достаточно у нас много писем, запросов с разных стран. We have quite a lot of requests from different countries to adopt and test the complex, and we say that it was created specifically to address the challenges of a hybrid war. The Phantom has already visited several international exhibitions. In February 2017, an independent online publication on the latest military equipment called the Ukrainian Prototype, one of the five most interesting and promising combat vehicles at the International Military Exhibition in Abu Dhabi. All that in just one year after the idea of the Phantom appeared. Pavlo Barbul radically changes the ideas about the capabilities of the Ukrainian military defense industry. We are much more flexible and we are much more mobile. That is, we choose the contractors who move faster. Because we understand that if there is a window of opportunity, then there is a trend. If we miss it, then none of our ideas will come to fruition. Of course, it would be best to not have to deal with wars at all in the future. But if and when the next aggressor of the 21st century decides to start an armed conflict, it is quite possible that the defending side will defend its independence and save thousands of lives thanks to weapons and technologies from Ukraine, from the master of their craft to know about modern warfare firsthand.